A young man came to Jesus and asked a very important question regarding salvation. The question was, are there few that be saved? In other words, the young man wanted to know, Lord, tell me, how many people are going to be saved? Tell me the truth. If there is anyone who knew the answer to that question, it would be Jesus. Because he is omniscient and he is the one who holds the key to salvation. So that was a very important question. I have a feeling that the young man really wanted to know, Lord, am I going to be saved? You know, um, just tell me, should I really even bother to try? The reality is that today we are bombarded with so much evil on every hand. And it appears very difficult, sometimes impossible, to truly maintain a godly life and to be a good Christian. So many distractions, so many people who are supporting the wrong thing and it becomes so unpopular to be a good Christian. I'm so delighted that Jesus answered this young man's question. And so we're going to be examining the answer that Jesus gave this young man. Are there few that be saved? Now in responding to the young man, instead of telling him how many will be saved, you know, something that is 144,000, but that's another question, or whether or not he will be saved, Jesus told the young man how to be saved. And I think that is most important because what it does is that it opens the door to whosoever will. What Jesus told the young man is very important for us to note. He said to him, strive to enter in at the straight gate. There are three things that I want to point out regarding this answer that's important to us in answering the question about how difficult it is to be saved. The first thing I want to point out is that Jesus said, there is a way. In other words, a way has been provided, praise God, and that is what we should celebrate. There is a way for all of us to make it. There is a way to be saved. So what it says to me, therefore, is that rather than focusing on the difficulties of the way, we should be really celebrating that there is a way. We can always say we don't like the way, <laughs> but there is a way out. And, you know, if, if you're lost somewhere and you want to find your way out, you're not going to ask the first person you see, oh, what is the easiest way out? You're not going to ask, what is the shortest way out? You're going to ask for the way out. And once you conclude that the person have pointed the right way, you are going to take that way despite its difficulty. Because your objective is not to find an easier way, it is to find the right way. And the point is about regarding salvation, a way has been provided. Jesus tells us what that way is. In St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14, he says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, or the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that find that go in the earth. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. In other words, Jesus is saying that there are two ways to walk in this life. The narrow way that leads to eternal life and the broad way that leads to destruction. There are several things about the broad way that you need to be aware of. Number one, it is the most popular way. <laughs> okay? Secondly, on the broad way, you can find space for every man's opinion. But the problem with the broad way is that the Bible says it leads to death. As Proverbs 16 verse 25 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And not only is it that it leads to death, but it is a miserable way. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. The second way that we can talk about is the narrow way. This is the way that leads to life. And Jesus tells us what that way is. He says in St. John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The thing about this way and the reason it's called narrow is not that it's, it doesn't have space for everyone, but it has only one way. <laughs> it doesn't have space for every man's opinion, but it has space for everyone. Jesus says, I am the door. 
by me, if any man will enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So there is a way to be saved. There is a way that leads to eternal life, and that is the narrow way. The thing about it is that this way calls for a complete surrender of our lives to God. It is narrow, as I said before, because it does not make space for every man's opinion. When the rich wrong ruler came to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do, be, do, do to be saved? And the Lord told him, eventually the Bible says that he walked away sadly because he had great riches. And the disciples lamented. They said, Lord, who then can be saved? And the Lord said something very important. It said, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, Jesus says, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. In other words, if men try to find their own way, if they, if they seek out their, doing their own thing, it is impossible for them to be saved. But with God, meaning that if we surrender all to God and trust Him completely, it is impossible for us to be lost. Difficult the way it is, but it is possible. The third and final thing to note about what Jesus said to the young man is that He said to the young man, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. In other words, for us to make it, we must strive. This word strive comes from the Greek word agizomai, which means to contend for victory. It identifies the striving that the Olympic athletes do to get to the finish line. In other words, even though eternal life is not something that we can gain by our own efforts, it is something we're going to contend for to maintain that victory over sin. We're going to have to contend with our sinful nature that's trying to take back its position. We're going to have to contend with temptations from the enemy. We're going to contend with trials and temptations and difficulties in the way. But Jesus says, strive to enter in. Jesus was the one who says, he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, there, are, there are some who would think that, you know, since eternal life is free, why do we need to strive for it? But the truth is, we all know what it means to strive for stuff worth striving for. We strive to save our marriage. We strive to get a good education. We strive to get first place in the line. We strive to get that parking space at the parking lot. We strive for everything in life. But the question is, is eternal life worth striving for? Is it worth giving everything for? Is it worth contending for? And if that is the case, I encourage you, as Jesus says, strive to enter in at a straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will try to enter in and will not be able. The Christian pathway might be difficult, but thank God it is not impossible. You can make it.